Oh boy, oh boy, have we got some shit to talk about today. What happened yesterday was, I started a Monday stream, we were just chilling out, we were just having a nice time, and then suddenly everyone was like, Tally, 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 Tally. They banned Boostin Tally. And we were like, well, we're gonna have to go and talk about that. And then that got the ball rolling and we had discussions about pay to win and uh, stuff like, yes, spot close up, I know, I'm sorry. I thought there is no news that can be bigger than this. I was like, this is the biggest news of the week. Even if we get a 9.2 release date this week, there is no bigger news that could possibly happen this week than that. And with that, turned off the stream and I was like sitting here, I was like, my throat was aching. It felt like it had been ripped with like glass, you know? And I was like, it's okay though. And I went down, I picked up my baby boy and I brushed his teeth while well, he chewed his toothbrush for a bit. And, and we were like, mm, 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 mm. and we had a really good cuddle and we went uh, into his room and I was giving him a snuggle to get him down to bed. And what should happen on my phone? But this fucking thing, suddenly Blizzard had announced that cross faction instances were coming not in 10.0 next expansion, but this very expansion in 9.2.5, which by the way, is confirmation that there will indeed be a 9.2.5 as well. Holy shit. I 100% believe the conspiracy. That after you post a video or end a stream, they decide to drop a bomb of info. I like, honestly, seriously, I'm start like, it's always been a joke that we've made, but I'm starting to kind of believe it myself. Cause no sooner had I finished that stream than they dropped that news. I couldn't believe it. It was so huge. I mean, clearly, right? Clearly, this is something that isn't everyone is incredibly happy about. So before anything else, before we discuss it even more, before we really get into the nitty gritty of this and talk about, you know, what it means uh, and, and what it could mean later, I think I speak for everyone when I say... Cross-faction. Faction. Am I Horde? Am I Alliance? Doesn't matter! Doesn't matter what kind of potato I am, because I can play with anyone. The fuck you, Bob Single is better. Uh, well, okay, so one of my favorite things about all of this has been seeing um, the, <laughs> the people who, many people saying it ironically, but some people saying it not ironically, saying like, wow, Microsoft have really improved Blizzard. Since Microsoft took over Blizzard, you know, we, they've banned boosting. And, and developer feedback has been better, the blues, and, and cross-faction, you know? Papa Spencer's and fuck around. I can't wait to be able to use my COVID vaccine as two-factor authentication to actually log into WoW, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be like, I'll log in, they'll go, two-factor authentication, I'll just go, beep, beep, beep. Perfect. Anyway, look, shush, we're gonna do this seriously. Before we get to the fun stuff, we're gonna read the words, okay? Good. I feel like I actually need uh, a bit of music for this, actually. For years now, many players have questioned whether the rules restricting communication and cooperation between Alliance and Horde need to be so absolute. The faction divide could keep close friends from playing together, or cause players to feel that their faction leaves them with a far fewer opportunities to pursue their favorite group content. But these downsides have long been justified in order to preserve a central element of the Warcraft universe. It all began with a game titled Warcraft Orcs and Humans. Cut to Chris Metzen on stage at BlizzCon. Like, where are my Horde brothers at for the Horde? For the Horde! And the Alliance, where are you at, guys? Where are you at, guys, for the Alliance? For the Alliance! Ah! But, to quote a one-time war chief of the Horde, times change. I am pleased to announce that we are working on adding the ability for Alliance and Horde players to form pre-made parties together for dungeons, raids, and raided PvP. We are planning to test and release it as part of the subsequent 9.2.5 update. We're eager to hear your feedback about the details we're sharing today and on the details of our implementation when this feature becomes available to the public test realm following the release of Eternity's End. Straight away, 
and, and I want to say this uh, right from the very start, actually, before we even get into the details of it, I feel like Blizzard are doing this absolutely the right way. Pretty much everything that they're doing here for a first iteration of this, and I think it will be opened up even more in coming expansions, I think this is the best they could have done. And I think it's the best iteration of it they could have done for a first ep uh, iteration. Having it um, for instance play straight off the bat just perfectly makes sense. It's really good. Um, and uh, opt in, I think, is like a really important feature of this. I think that's really, really good. Not forcing everyone to for it to be a thing if you don't want it to be a thing. And I think that's amazing. I think like that's such a clever move. I think it's absolutely the right thing to do. These guidelines led us to the following system. Players will be able to directly invite members of the opposite faction to a party if you have a battle tag or real ID friendship, or if you you are members of a cross-faction WoW community. Do we have cross-faction WoW communities already? I mean, we do, in a way, but this makes it sound like they're going to do new types of community as well. So th th this isn't, just to clarify, this isn't a promise of a new type of community. This is already there. Mm -hmm. Pre-made groups in the group finder listings for Mythic Dungeons, Raid, or Rated Arena RBGs will be open to applicants of both factions, though the group leader may choose to restrict the list listing to same faction applicants if they so choose. So I'm guessing in this case, you don't have to be battle tag or real ID friends with the leader of the group, right? In applying to that group, if you're of a different faction, you are automatically opting in in that point, right? To join a group that's in group finder, that's cross-faction, you're not going to have to be battle tag or real ID friends with them or in a cross-faction community with them. That's a whole different way of just opting in. The leader lets you discriminate against the opposite faction. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's fair too. I think that's, I think that's as it should be too. As many options to kind of like opt out of this and stay away from this as possible, I think is really important because there will be people that don't want it kind of forced on them in a way. And I think that's perfectly fair. For me, it's an incredibly exciting thing and there's nothing bad about it, but there'll be people who feel differently and they should be able to avoid it almost completely if they want to really. This is how it's, so this is how you opt into it. This is how you make it happen. Uh, and what happens when it has happened? Once in a party together, members of the opposite faction will remain unfriendly while in the outdoor world and fully hostile in war mode. I mean, they're going to be ambush groups, right? This is like perfect for a PvP ambush group. You need to get your 25 kills out in the open world. You start a group which is like doing a raid. Come join us and you open it up to 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 both factions but you're all you've made a group of like horde players to kill alliance and you only accept alliance people and as soon as they get outside the rage you're like come on we are friendly come join our raid group oh you can have all of the loot <laughs> only if they're in war mode yeah exactly exactly yeah yeah totally but who doesn't play in war mode like honestly who doesn't play in war mode Oh, you motherfuckers in my chat are going to tell me you don't play in war mode now, aren't you? That's what you're going to do. Imagine not playing in war mode. That blows my mind. I have to say, I did, uh, for the very first time, I switched from war mode um, to not war mode because I had to to join a group when I was uh, doing my rep grind in Corthia. You know that really cool rep grind you can do in Corthia? You get a little group of five and you just go into like uh, the void, into the rift, and you just absolutely fucking bop it. I had to go off war mode for the first time, like since it was introduced to join this group because it was the only group going. And like as I turned off war mode, Corthia filled with people. Like, I always thought, you know, I was like, 9.1 is dead. 9.15 is absolutely dead. There's no one in Corthia. This is like the current zone, and there's hardly anyone here. There's like three or four people running around. I turned off war mode, and suddenly it was like... Just thousands of people appeared. <laughs> I was like, oh, WoW isn't dead. They're just pussies. <laughs> That's why all like the famous WoW players think WoW is dead. It's because they play on war mode and they don't see anyone anywhere the whole time. Because <laughs> they're all like horde bass and badasses playing with war mode on. They're all running around looking for the old world PvP. And little do they know WoW isn't dead. It's just full of absolute fucking pussies. Upon entering a dungeon raid or rated PvP match, however, all members will be friendly and be able to assist each other in combat, trade loot, earn shared achievements, and otherwise fully cooperate in the same way members of the same faction have always been able to. Doing Mythic Plus keys or chasing higher PvP ratings should be able to operate seamlessly. 
whether they're a same faction or cross faction group. This functionality will also uh, apply to legacy instances and is available at all levels, though there will be several older instances that cross faction parties cannot enter. Battle of Tazara Law, Trial of Crusader, Ice Crown Citadel for very obvious reasons, right? 20 the Giant 20. Okay, so these are all instances that are different depending on what faction you're in. Battle for Desire Law, first third, um, is completely different uh, depending on whether you're Horde or Alliance. All of it has different things happening whether you're Horde or Alliance as well. Likewise, Trial of the Crusader uh, and Ice Crown Citadel, the, the first fight in Ice Crown Citadel is the airships, um, which is, again, very different depending on whether it is Horde or Alliance. Uh, could they make it just random which one you get? Yes, I'm sure they could, and I'm sure that is something that they will do. They do say, like, um, currently that these things are uh, not available. So I think it's one of those things that they want to get out of the gate without being held up by like for the sake of three instances that can be really hard and take a little bit more time to sort out there are likely this is this is this is my favorite paragraph in the entire thing okay there are likely those who have read this far with some unease, worried that this is chipping away at a foundational principle of Warcraft at BlizzCon in 2019 when an attendee asked about cross-faction play I remember because I was hosting the motherfucker <laughs> we responded at the time that alliance and horde separation is a pillar of what makes Warcraft Warcraft. But upon reflection, that's an oversimplification. Alliance and horde identity is what is fundamental to Warcraft. That is such a great sentence. What a, what a fucking great line. Just a really nice way of putting it. And I've seen some takes on the internet, some less generous takes, who think it's a good idea, but who are like... You know, Blizzard infuriate me with all this lawyer speak. Why can't they just take the L? Why can't they just admit that they were wrong? Which, you know, I don't want to defend Ian Hazacostas, dude. That's exactly what they're doing in this sentence, right? Like, this is the official announcement of it, and they are absolutely admitting that they were wrong. A am I wrong? Ian is, like, he's flat out saying that they were wrong here. He's not, he's not muddying his words. You know, he's saying, on reflection, we've changed our mind, we were wrong. I think it's an unfair criticism to say that they are, they refuse to admit that they were wrong and they're doing lawyer speak and stuff. I just think that's exactly what they're saying here in a really fucking elegant way. We're hopeful that these changes will serve to actually strengthen faction identity by allowing more players to play the faction whose values, aesthetic, and characters they find more compelling. Another great point. Uh, you're gonna enjoy factions more and find more identity with them if you can play any fucking character you want, right? Like, one of the things that I'm looking forward to the most out of all of this, well, apart from anything, in our guild runs, having horde players, like, ruck up in our guild runs. I know that uh, cross-faction guilds aren't enabled yet. I'm certain that will be coming next expansion. Like, I'm certain. No need, just cross-faction communities. Uh, and, and achievements and stuff. It's just better to have, like, and sending mail to each other and uh, the guild perks that you get for being in a guild and stuff like that. No, I think I think there are, there is really good reason to have um, cross-faction guilds, honestly. Yeah, guild bank, all sorts. I, I think there's tons of reasons just to go the whole hog and uh, allow it, to be honest. But also, the other thing I'm looking forward to most is literally being able to play with my horde characters in the guild. You know, being able to play with my Horde characters a lot more because most most of my friends are in the guild, they play Alliance. And just being able to rock up with them playing my Horde characters would be really cool. I know there are people in my guild specifically that would really, really love to play Horde. Only don't play Horde because they're in the guild. And it's going to be fantastic for them. Yeah, Volpira for everyone. Maybe they're doing this as going to be part of the story going forward in 10.0. Great point. Yeah, it could well be the fact. For every Jaina, there is a Gen, and that seems unlikely to change anytime soon. But why shouldn't players be able to make that choice for themselves? I, I, I know exactly what the thing is going to be, but quick straw poll in chat. W or L for this news? <laughs> I'd be very surprised if I saw any Ls at all. Yeah, yeah, big, big dub. I'm gonna have to put fucking shades on to keep from being blinded by the size of this dub, boss man. Clearly something that should have been done a long time ago. Forever, I will regret the fact that this didn't happen at the end of BFA. Because the whole way BFA was structured, you know, I remember making videos all the way through BFA saying something has to change at the end of this. And I was not the only one by any means. It was generally like the opinion in the community, right? We, we, we were like, this whole expansion being geared around this faction war, which then kind of falls apart at the end. Like this is the perfect, perfect time to 
allow cross-faction play in some way and everyone was predicting it was going to happen and it should have happened this is amazing and i i've got nothing bad to say about it i think it's brilliant but i will never not regret that it didn't happen at the end of bfa think how many major things come in the last patch of the expansion like lfr lfg allied races in the last patch of legion don't forget that you could, uh, I mean, it was the last patch. 7.3.5, wasn't it? Yeah, so allied races as well. It was a box feature of uh, BFA, but they did actually introduce it for pre-orders, I believe, in the last patch of Legion, which was awesome. It's just really, really made me happy. They need to go further. This isn't enough. It will do for the last patch of the expansion to kind of iron out any bugs and what have you and buy themselves a bit of time for it for 10.0 and i think that's really important i think it's good that they're not trying to because you know something's going to go wrong when they do this this game is going to fucking break i know they'll be testing it on the ptr but still <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's very, very good that they're doing it in the last patch for that reason, to, to buy themselves the space to maybe go a bit further in 10.0. I'd like to see cross-faction guilds. I'd like to see cross-faction open world play. I'm cool with people from other uh, factions not being allowed into Faction City still. I'm down with that. I know our peers would disagree with me on that one. I'm just like so happy about this. <laughs> This is turning into a little bit of a love-in, to be honest. But I think I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm gonna call someone else to come to the stream to give their opinion, who I suspect might have a slightly different opinion on this. So, will you please welcome uh, the the new guest star of this stream? Very, very, very occasionally, a character that we have now decided is called Neil versus Gammon Face. Oh, have you seen Blizzard? What have they gone and done? They've gone and enabled cross-faction play. How fucking desperate do they have to be to enable cross-faction play? In vanilla WoW, everyone was like, ooh, allow cross-faction. And Blizzard were like, no, you think you do, but you don't. And then TBC, everyone was like, oh, please, can we have cross-faction play? And Blizzard were like, no, you think you do, but you don't, you fucking idiots. All you do is pay for the game. All you do is pay for it. What say do you have? And then in Wrath of the Lich King, people were like, oh, please, can we have cross-faction play? Please, 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 we are the paying customers after all. And Blizzard were like, no, fuck off. Shove it up your fucking ass. You can see Ian Hazakostis was sitting there looking at the stocks falling and he was like, either we've got to allow cross-faction play or we've got to make one of another character in Overwatch gay. But they've run out of characters because every character in Overwatch is gay. And then they were like, okay, well, we'll have to make another character in WoW gay. And then they realized every character in WoW is already gay. So they couldn't fucking do that. And so they had no choice but to enable cross-faction play. It means fucking nothing, Ian. Of course they enable cross-faction play, because doesn't it tell you everything that you need to know about modern Blizzard? Proper Blizzard, old school Blizzard, Blizzard with absolute fucking legends like Chris Metzen and Alex Afrasiabi. <laughs> that was built on fighting and war masculinity now what now what's it fucking called a oh, world of non-binary fucking pacifist world of gay craft now it's all fucking world of pronouns like he and she in fact what they're gonna do is they'll probably get rid of factions altogether it'll just be one faction or no, it will be a million factions. You'll have you'll have you'll have the man faction and the woman faction and the Apache helicopter faction and the non-binary black lesbian in a wheelchair faction. Fucking shit, mate. I log into the game. I, it won't even let me log in. Do you know why? Because I'm a heterosexual white man. This is as bad as Batwoman now. Uh, that was our occasional guest to the stream, Neil versus Gammonface, giving his opinion. Maybe some of you agree with him, maybe you don't. At the moment, I still have to do this every time I do that character. That is not Preach. It's not Preach for millions of reasons. Number one, most important reason, Preach would never say anything like that. Because Preach is a fucking awesome, cuddly dude, and I love him. Number two, He's got loads of fucking hair, Preach. It doesn't even look like him. So there is an interview here as well. After 18 years, World of Warcraft is finally relaxing. It's deep historical faction divide between Alliance and Horde players. Is there an interview bit here? 
was actually part of a larger re-examining of World of Warcraft's fundamentals, a process Blizzard began back in 9.1.5. So do you remember, you know, all the changes started happening in 9.1.5? And I said, you know, this seems a bit different. And only time will tell. Because, you know, there was a huge kind of bout of soul searching in the wake of, uh, well, in the wake of the scandals and stuff as well. And, you know, pretty dire, we have to imagine, wow numbers and things like that. And, you know, there was a lot of talk about how they were going to change their philosophy going forward. I heard it from people working at the company. I've heard from the company that in the build up to 9.1.5, there was a big, big dev meeting, team two meeting, where they basically got around the table and they were like this is you know what we want to do we want to you know lots of voices that have been pushing for certain things like making things more alt friendly a lot of the changes we've seen in 9.1.5 they didn't come out of nowhere the way i've heard it and take this with a pinch of salt but it is from the inside the way i've heard it and i know other creators that uh, have heard the same thing is that there was one particular dev i don't know who it was but there was one particular dev who had power of veto who would constantly torpedo like a lot of the ideas that we're seeing come into the game more like in 9.1.5 with like more user-friendly catch-up with changing the covenants getting rid of stuff like conduit energy and stuff like that now i don't know how real that is what i do know is that um there were people very happy that they were finally getting their voices heard in 9.1.5 there's a, definitely a sense that there was um you know, an opening of ears to ideas from maybe a bit further down the team and stuff like that. I, I, I genuinely have no idea who that dev could be. No idea. Could feasibly be John Height? I don't know. I remember saying at the time when 915 was happening that there was a, a from my contacts in the company, there was a real sense that they were being listened to and being allowed to implement things that they'd wanted to implement for a long time. Obviously, I was called a shill for saying that. And honestly, fair enough, because what evidence did people have at the time that this would actually be a thing that happened? 9.15 was really, really heartening with the kind of changes they made to that. But I don't blame anyone for being skeptical. I was a little bit skeptical myself. I was just saying what I'd heard. Something that is genuinely really heartening to see and is kind of exciting to see is how much that has been carried through since. I think that 9.2, and I'm not the only person to say this, I think 9.2 is one of the best development cycles we've had for a patch. I think the way that the devs have communicated throughout the process, the changes that they've made based on player feedback, the in-depth blue posts that we've had explaining things like uh, tier sets and design choices, I think genuinely the communication and like just acceptance of feedback in, in, in 9.2 uh, PTR has been exactly what you'd want, right? Yeah, exactly. It's Phil Spencer. Oh, Thank you, Microsoft. Thank you so much. <laughs> but there, there's been a noticeable shift, and I don't think that's a controversial thing to say. I think, I think, uh, you know, the evidence is kind of starting to stack up now that they kind of meant it when they said that. And here's Ian saying it again. Uh, this shift is actually part of a larger re-examining of World of Warcraft's fundamentals process, which Blizzard began back in 9.15. Uh, I don't know if this would be said later as well. Uh, we've been revisiting things we've said no to that people in the community have asked for, and one of them has been the desire for cross-faction play. Tally, I want you copium, but I'm not convinced. I want your copium, but I'm not convinced. Do you know what? It's perfectly reasonable not to be convinced. I'm not convinced either. You know, the proof is in the pudding in 10.0, right? But I do think they have been really good in 9.2 feedback, uh, in both explaining their kind of aims, objectives, and making changes despite that, um, based on suggestions. And I think a lot of, like, obviously the changes they made in 9.15 were really good, made the game a lot better. And I think that carries through in 9.2, and we, we keep getting proof of it. You know, the fact that um, boosts are getting banned and it just and, and now this cross faction play and we haven't even even had a 10.0 announcement yet. I feel like it's just a right now. And, you know, we've got a pretty low bar in the last year, but it feels like a very good time to be a WoW player right now. It feels like an exciting time unless you're actually playing the game, which is boring because there's nothing going on. <laughs> I joke. I joke. The fact that cross-faction play isn't going to be a big feature of 10.0 and instead 0.5 patch makes me excited for what the main features of 10.0 will be. Yeah, I mean, 
I kind of think it is a 10.0 feature in the same way that Alliance Races were a BFA feature, but we got them in Legion. I'm kind of thinking of it as, as a 10.0 feature. But yeah, it's easy to speculate that it could mean exciting things for the story of 10.0. Part of the blog that we put out that laid the foundation for this was about looking at assumptions we've made about how character progression should work and really revisiting what we've said no to that people in the community have asked for. One of them has been the desire for cross-faction play in some form, suggesting that in a Star Wars game you wouldn't let Jedi and Sith cooperate, but then he corrects, saying that example is actually quite different. Jedi and Sith in that universe are ideologies, they're choices, he continues. Someone chooses to walk the path of light or go to the dark side. You're born Alliance, you're born Horde. That's not a choice you make. That's something that's assigned to you and that predestined fate isn't necessarily something that we want to necessarily stand by. So fucking woke. Intersectional factionalism. Yeah, you can be whatever you like. Unless it's a straight white male. That's not the world we want to build. But it's also not the world we really have been building, uh, or the story we've been telling for the last 20 years and going back to Warcraft 3. Every single, like, WoW expansion has had, has ended, at least ended, with the factions teaming up. Like, every single one. And this idea that WoW is somehow based on the faction divide, WoW is based on, if anything, the story of WoW is based on the constant overcoming of the faction divide. That's the recurring theme throughout World of Warcraft is constantly, whenever it's important to do so, the faction war divide is absolutely overcome. We frankly probably reached the tipping point a little while ago, but in a game like this, we're stubborn and traditionalists, and it's scary to say, let's uproot this foundational pillar of what the game has been for over a decade, but it's time. So he even says, like, he even blames stubbornness in this interview. I have to disagree with the people that are saying Ian is, like, not admitting they were wrong. I've seen, like, plenty of takes on, on Twitter where they, like, where they're, they're saying, oh, just say you were wrong. Just take the L. It's maddening. It's infuriating that they can never accept that they were just wrong. Like, that's happened in both the articles we've read now. But I feel like unless Ian literally walks down the street naked while Bellwoman is like, shame, shame, shame. It's not going to be seen as enough for people. And even if he did do that, people would just be like, oh, he's only doing it because they need subs. <laughs> it's like, yes. Enough would be to learn uh, to build and not wait for the shit show before they implement. I mean, fine, whatever, man. But, you know, I just feel like you don't have to like anything, okay? You don't have to have a good reason to dislike anything. It's okay to like stuff when it's good and dislike stuff when it's shit. Give us a 10.0 without five layered convoluted systems. It's all we need. It's not all we need. It would be a nice thing to have, absolutely. It's not all we need. No, I need a bit more than that as well, to be perfectly honest with you. Hazakostas says that there probably won't be a story acknowledgement uh, about the gameplay change, as the factions are currently already at an armistice, which is why I will never not regret that they didn't do this in BFA. That would have been the perfect time to do it. He does think it unlikely they'll ever do an all-consuming faction conflict expansion ever again, like Battle for Azeroth, yeah, no fucking shit. Do you think they might allow the races to choose their faction themselves, or would that be uh, a death of one faction? It would be fun to, to be able to choose your faction, whatever your race. It'd be fun to create a tauren and say, this is going to be an alliance tauren, right? That would be fun. I'm perfectly fine with having whatever race you are determine your, your faction, but that really not being a barrier to any kind of gameplay with any kind of other player. Uh, what if there were more factions? I think that would be the opposite of what we're trying to achieve here. <laughs> of course, none of this stops Blizzard from eventually taking things further. Though Hazakostas suspects that they won't have either the technical or ideological reason to implement the change in World of Warcraft Classic. Holy shit, that's something I never thought of. He's open to hearing community feedback and reconsidering if the desire is there. Okay, classic players in the chat. Yes or no, Y or N in chat, cross-faction classic? Yeah, most people saying no, I'm not surprised, but a fair few yeses. And you're not allowed just to say yes because you don't play classic and you want to see them cry. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to be sitting there going, ooh, I don't play classic, but I just love to see them cry. Big yes from me, fam.
Keep classic classic. It's already too late for that, my friend. And in fairness, I really like what they're doing with Season of Mastery. Granted, I say that as someone that does not play classic, so what the fuck does my opinion matter? Literally nothing. But from the outside, it is quite fun to see what they're doing in Season of Mastery. Well, what do the Wowhead comments say? I imagine they're actually going to be quite good. Oh my god, let's go. Holy fuck. At last, wish it could include random heroics and such though. Love it, great changes. Holy sh! great day to be a WoW player. Okay, I'm happy. Oh my god, they fucking did it. Way to go. Dude, I can't handle it. This is too much. You know the game population is down a good amount when they have to mix factions to hit a size goal for Qs. Finally, it's happening. Where were you when Microsoft saved World of Warcraft? And that's one of those unironic ones I was, I was talking about. Pog boys, we got it. The mad lads actually did it. And so it begins. The greatest Hersey given by Blizzard. I have arrived. <laughs> Look. Okay. It's too easy to make fun of typos, okay? Anyone who follows our Twitter knows that, like, I, I typo all the time in every tweet I send. And there's a reason for that. It's because most tweets I send are one-handed while I'm trying to put my baby to bed. That's my prime Twitter time. But when something is so typo-y, it's kind of impossible not to enjoy it just a little bit more. I have arrived, and it is now that we perform our charge. In fealty to the God Emperor, our undying Lord, and by the grace of the Golden Throne, I declare exterminatus upon the Imperial world of Azeroth. I hereby sign the death warrant of an entire world, and consign a million souls to oblivion. Let us weep for the soul, for this world, for Hersey, have lay claim to it all. And dark days under the shadow of Xbox and my... <laughs> yeah, my favourite bit of 40k is the Hor Horus Hersey. Is there anyone who's going to swap mains now? Anyone in chat who's going to swap mains? If you're going to swap mains, can you write what faction you'll be changing to in chat? Write the faction that you're changing to. Alliance, 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 Hordes, Hordes, Alliance, Alliance... Alliance, Alliance. It's going to enable a lot more Alliance play for, like, more serious players, right? I'm sure there'll be people in, like, top, top guilds even who will relish the opportunity to go Alliance. And I think that's fantastic. Yeah, I've got, my, I've got mains on both Horde and Alliance, and I love having that. I've got a bunch of uh, Horde characters to go with a bunch of Alliance characters, and I love it. But I will, there's no doubt that I will play my Alliance, my Horde characters more than I do so now when this happens. Uh, Max said at least 15 of his guild will swap instantly. Holy shit. This doesn't fix playing in the open world on a PvE server and having half the people I come in contact with not being able to communicate or play with for absolutely no reason. I think that guilds should definitely be a thing. 100%. I think cross-faction guilds should absolutely be a thing. I can see an argument for not allowing it in open world play. Not allowing it in like questing content. Simply because I quite like Horde and Alliance having different quests sometimes. I like Horde and Alliance have different quests. So I, I'm I'm coming over to the idea of, a, of keeping the, the world separation, which is different from what I said at the beginning of this stream. Because... You know, I can admit when I'm wrong. <laughs> oh my god, this is so dumb. Cross-faction guilds. What's next? Alliance can just come chill in Ogmar and use the auction house. Zeppelins. They better be careful with how far they take this. Yeah, okay, so I'm laughing, but man has a good point. I'm sorry I'm doing a lot of, like, off-the-cuff straw polls in chat recently. I promise I'm not doing it for engagement. I'm, like, genuinely just doing it because I want to, I wanna, like, take your opinions on this. Like, in your ideal iteration of this would you have alliance characters able to go into Ogrimmar, horde characters able to go into stormwind etc would you do that yes or no in chat n n or y in chat yeah no i think most people agree that they wouldn't want that i know that the rp community are going to completely disagree and the community the rp community are their own thing maybe you could change it so that on rp servers they can uh yes but without war mode on well war mode is disabled in cities anyway i would probably say no and i can't even really tell you why i can't even really eloquate why that just feels like too much to me get an in-game passport from the shop yeah this is also the first we've heard from ian in months and that's nice 
<laughs> That's good to know he's still alive. Ian got his internet back, everyone. People are happy, and so they should be. It's it's a, a, a brave new world. It's a grand new era for World of Warcraft, and I'm totally here for it, and I'm loving it. Yeah, one of the best changes made to the game for years. You can say that about a few of the changes recently. Oh, check Reddit. Ah, fuck you. Everyone seems pretty happy about it as well. <laughs> okay, this is my favorite meme so far. Oh, did you see that one that came up by uh, them, by the way? Did you see one of my, my Google accounts that came up on the screen? Secret WoW expansion, Google account. One of the leaks on MMO Champion was written by me. And I'm not going to tell you which one. <laughs> I just wanted to see if I could do it. And I didn't mention it to any of you. I never mentioned it to you. I just fucking did it. But I just wanted to, I just wanted to be mischievous. And I wanted to do it. And I wanted to see what content creators would react to it. Anyway, I wouldn't have told you if that hadn't come up on the screen just then. Trade chat is back. Look, everyone's so fucking happy right now. Alliance players trying to experience end game the horde. <laughs> There are some great fucking memes on here, I gotta say. <laughs> yes! These memes are legit! I'm having such a good time! <laughs> Thanks to Cross Faction Play, I can finally play the race I want. Also me. <laughs>